Gang, today we are wrapping up our walk through the book of Mark by looking at the last two chapters, chapters 15 and 16. And if you've made it this far, I want to say congratulations. Well done. Here's what I know. For some of you, this may have been the first time you've ever read the Bible. And to you, I want to say, honestly, I am so proud of you. And I hope this is the beginning of a lifelong relationship you pursue with the Bible. In Mark 15, 16, uh, Jesus is handed over to be crucified. He dies and is buried. He's publicly executed, something we can't imagine. But if you're a follower of Jesus, we know that the cross, it wasn't the end of the story. In chapter 16, the women, they go to Jesus' tomb. They have a job to do. They're going to anoint his body. But as the women approach the tomb, here's what I'm certain of. They had a question on their minds. And it's a question you probably have never thought about before. The whole time they walked to the tomb on that first Easter and thought of the work they were supposed to do inside that tomb there on Jesus' body, here's what I know they were wondering. Who is going to help us roll this stone away? Who on earth is going to help us move that giant boulder so we can get in and get our work done? If you're a follower of Jesus, every Easter we hear the story that we read for today in Mark chapter 16. The women, they rise early on the first Easter to go to the tomb in order to anoint Jesus' body with this ointment. In that culture where embalming bodies, it wasn't really a practice, anointing a body with scented ointments, it was a way of honoring the deceased. That fragment, fragrant uh, ointment, it kept the smells of a decaying body at bay. You see, these women had a job to do. And... Again, I'm guessing they had one question on their mind as they made their way to the tomb on that first Easter. Who on earth is going to help us roll the stone away? I mean, think about it. The stones that would have covered graves or tombs, they were massive. Uh, They had to be in order to keep wild animals from getting in and having their way with the bodies. The women, they must have wondered, how are we going to move that giant rock so we can get in and anoint Jesus' body. Of course, to their surprise, when they arrived at the tomb, well, they got an answer to their question. Friends, if you are at all like me, I spend the majority of my days asking, if I'm honest, the wrong questions and worrying about all the wrong things. I get often fixated on big, massive stones that our world seems enamored with, if I'm honest. The big stones of money, power, pleasure, fame. If you were at all like me, in fact, if you were human, these big stones, they occupy a heavy place in our lives. Here's what I think. The Gospel of Mark, which you have now read, it tells the story of Jesus who came in love to live and die for you. And then he lived again, conquering death for all, so that we don't have to live fixated on those big, heavy stones. Friends, God pushes them all aside and points us to the freedom of the empty tomb, freedom found in the grace, mercy, and love of Jesus. When the women, they reached the tomb and saw that big old stone pushed aside, all their worries, they went with it. And here's what I know. If it was true for them, it's just as true for you and me. Whatever stones you're up against or you're dragging around, whatever stones have you worried and fill you with fear, know this. Jesus came to free you. Free you of all those stones that weigh you down and hold you back. And friends, if the tomb is empty, well, here's the truth. No stone is too heavy for God. One last time, I want to give you a couple of questions to consider. First off, what does the death and resurrection of Jesus mean to you? What does it mean for your life? And secondly, in Mark 8, verse 29, Jesus asks Peter, Who do you say that I am? 
Now that you've read the book of Mark and the story of Jesus' life, how would you answer that very question?